Recent discussions about which long-term direction Formula One should go with its engines have tended to focus on two clear options. On the one side, there's committing to hybrids, an internal combustion engine with extra battery power allied to greater advances in more sustainable fuel. This is the option that F1 has taken. Then there has been much talk about going all electric further down the road. But the fact that battery power technology cannot propel a 200 miles an hour racing car for two hours at flat out speeds, as well as the fact that Formula E has a 25 year exclusivity contract for single seater electric racing, means that this is now a non starter for Formula One. But there is a third option that has been quietly bubbling away in the background hydrogen power. While the technology is a bit premature for the next cycle of 2025's F1 engine rules, it's definitely something that could be a serious consideration within the next decade, given the right developments. The recent announcement that Red Bull Advanced Technologies is to collaborate on the design of the chassis concept for a hydrogen fueled Le Mans sports car has reignited interest in the topic, and prompted some fresh thoughts about whether it could be viable for F1. After all, it's still an electric powertrain, but hydrogen offers a different way of producing charge presumably not cross-pollinating with FE's exclusivity deal. Red Bull is to work then with French racing car constructor Orica on the creation of what's known as the H24 concept, which aims to run a hydrogen class of cars at the 2024 Le Mans 24 hours. If the ambitious plans are successful, then it will open up a world of opportunity in creating a high-performance racing car that will produce zero carbon pollution. In fact, the only byproduct from the hydrogen-powered car is water. And so here it is again, the long-awaited return of science time. Now hydrogen is the most abundant chemical element in the universe. In terms of mass, hydrogen makes up around 75% of everything, but in terms of molecular quantity, it's closer to 89%. It forms part of almost all of our favourite liquids, solids and gases, but because it readily forms compounds with other elements, it's very hard to isolate the H2 molecules required to form the hydrogen fuel. So this is usually done via the electrolysis of water. Electrolysis uses a positively charged anode and a negatively charged cathode in a solution, separated by a permeable membrane to form new chemical compositions. At the anode, the hydrogen and oxygen split to form hydrogen ions, free electrons and oxygen. The H plus ions and the electrons then join forces to form H2 gas, to be packed up and used in a fuel cell. A hydrogen fuel cell takes the hydrogen molecules and breaks them again into hydrogen ions and electrons. The electrons then generate the current required to develop an electrical charge, which can then be stored by the car's onboard batteries. The hydrogen ions then recombine with the electrons and with oxygen to create water as its sole byproduct. That water theoretically can be used again in an electrolysis reaction to reclaim the hydrogen gas or used elsewhere. Although there are many different types of fuel cell, they all generally work on that principle, and multiple cells can be combined in various different ways to deliver different levels of current or voltage depending on the purpose. For Extreme E, this is done externally to plug in and charge the batteries on board the car, but future hydrogen electric cars, as used in the proposed high rays series, will eventually have an onboard fuel cell and an hydrogen tank in order to produce that reaction internally. Now we've covered the principles behind a hydrogen powered car, let's go back to look closer at the H24 concept. The H24 car is a serious piece of kit, aiming for around GT3 levels of performance in its initial incarnation. It will aim to produce around 550 kilowatts, around 730 horsepower at 17,000 RPM, with it reaching a maximum speed of 300 km an hour, or around 186 miles per hour. Its acceleration from 0 to 100 km an hour will be around 3.4 seconds, which compares to F1's 2.3 seconds and Formula E's 2.8 seconds. Take into account, however, that the H24 car is much heavier than either F1 or Formula E cars, and you realise what a feat this is for a hydrogen powered car. The electric motor will be direct drive, which means no gear shifting, no clutches, and no differential. The 8.6 kg fuel tank, where the hydrogen is stored at 700 bar, can be filled from empty in 3 minutes. It's hoped that a full tank can power the car for around 45 minutes. In terms of performance, the first version will clearly not be at the level that F1 demands, but Rome wasn't built in a day, and it would mark a first step in a path towards improving the technology so it could fit Grand Prix Racing's needs in the long term. This means not only steps forward in pace, but also how far the car can run. A 3 minute pit stop to fill up the tank isn't very F1, but who knows how far that number might drop, or how far one tank of hydrogen fuel could last an F1 car in the future. 
While hydrogen still has some way to go at the moment, there is definitely interest from manufacturers around the concept. Turning water into fuel to power a car, whose only byproduct is more water, sounds something amazing for sustainable motorsport. But beyond the idealism, in practical terms, there are big hurdles to overcome. First of all, the technology will need to guarantee F1 levels of performance if it's to have a realistic hope of getting the nod over hybrids. Then, even if hydrogen power units get such performance within the next decade, there will be costs. One of the realities that F1 needs to address, and got wrong with the current hybrid rules, was in focusing only on the technology itself rather than real-world considerations, like the money that manufacturers needed to spend to be competitive. Right now, hydrogen is not the answer for Formula 1. Instead, its plan for a sustainably fueled hybrid powertrain is one that ticks boxes for teams, manufacturers and sponsors alike. But even before the next generation of F1's hybrid engines hit the track at the start of the 2025 F1 season, Le Mans 2024 and the Mission H24 car could well offer us a glimpse of what the championship's longer-term future will be like. <laughs>